will it take to make forestry workers safe? On Friday, the Independent Forestry Review that was commissioned to find answers to that nagging question closed its nationwide consultation round. As they write what will be a crucial report for workers, the people most hurt by the country's deadliest industry are waiting, knowing change must come. Deborah Rewiti with this report. From the air, New Zealand's pine forests have an orderly picture book charm. Growing fast and straight, our plantation forests cover over 1.7 million hectares. It's a billion dollar business with log prices predicted to spike over the next three years. But in recent years, it's become harder to see the wood for the trees. Whether or not the recommendations of the independent review are actioned, what lies beneath the statistics is a diverse, highly competitive industry confronted by pressure and families of men who didn't come home safely from work. Who should you be angry at? Because I don't look like, I did see um, my son's boss in Rotorua. I felt sorry for him. I felt sorry for myself, but he didn't set out to go and kill my son. Nobody does. It's just the situation that we've have found ourselves in. Selina Edoera's firstborn son, Edomiha, spent three years in the country's only full-time college-based forestry program at Trident High in Whakatane. Well, he went to Kohana Reo, then he went through Kura Kaupapa, so then he comes to mainstream and doesn't want to do Māori. So, yeah, academically, his English wasn't very good, so I ended up putting him through Kip McGrath. Eremiha's forestry tutor, Chris Byrne, shot this footage of the student he affectionately nicknamed Trout. After 23 years in the job, he's taught hundreds of students, but Eremiha stood out. Well done there, Eremiha. Eremiha was like a son to me, really. The good thing is it's on the ground safely and it's in the right place. He was uh, a dynamic, dynamic young man. Edomiha had been in the workforce for three years by the beginning of 2013, described as forestry's nightmare year. At 19, Edomiha was the first and youngest fatality in a year that claimed the lives of 10 forestry men. He had industry-approved qualifications and was by nature a thoughtful, responsible young man. There's a lot of uh, young people around here where we live that didn't work. So he was actually quite proud with the fact that he had a job and that he um, held on to his job for three years. The cause of his death is still to be determined by the coroner, but from the moment police came to her door, Selena had questions that nobody answered. It's gone before I went to work. So, um, I know he walked out of here though. I do know that. Um, didn't expect them to come back in a box. It's undisputed that on January the 11th, 2013, Edomiha was working alone when he was killed. But Selena queries the date he started work and questions why an injury he sustained to his head the week before he was killed was not recorded. Only in the Farimate when I was at the Marae where I asked what happened. And I was told a story. The story is totally different from what's written down. It's all guessing. But late last year, Wellington-based CTU president, Helen Kelly, decided to take a closer look at Edomiha's case. No 19-year-old should go to work and not come home at the end of the day. You know, if there's no accountability and no prosecution, then there's no incentives in this industry to improve. The role of the state is very important in prosecuting and regulating uh, the forestry industry. Forestry health and safety has become a major campaign for the CTU, drawing heavy criticism from an industry where speaking out can threaten your livelihood and dangers seen as part of the job. But each one of the cards on her board represents a man killed. It is way out of line with all other industries and it's way out of line with international comparators. And I mean, we saw last year 10 deaths and uh, 
180 serious harm injuries. So that's how we started this campaign. CTU's prosecuting on behalf of both Selena and the whanau of 45-year-old forestry veteran Charles Finlay, who earned $16 an hour after almost 30 years in the Tokoroa bush. If you want to have a look at who's being hurt and who's being killed, they are overwhelmingly Māori families, and these families are being decimated by these deaths. And the irony is a lot of these forest lands would have been owned by Māori previously. They've been sold, privatised, planted, and now they're using the same uh, iwi to, you know, fell the forests, and they're suffering from these injuries. It's a huge issue for Māori. A memorial gathering earlier this year gave grieving whānau their chance to share memories and stories. My name is Selena. This is my son Eremia, the eldest of my three boys. Eremia was a proud, cheerful, polite, outgoing young man who had his whole life ahead of him. But sadly, I will never get to give him the 21st we spoke about. Nor will I see him buy the house next door. Nor will I see him get married. Nor will I see any children from my son. Selena still wants answers, but it's the reliable details of life that keep her strong enough to support her two young sons. And it's a world away from the business face of forestry. Profit comes before the people, and it's people versus machines. Our men are not machines. Selena's thoughts are prophetic. Owners have already said the safest option is to take men off the ground, and they're waiting for machinery that can make that happen. As owners of $2 billion in forestry assets that include land, trees, and energy options, Māori are also poised to become major players. And how high they prioritise health and safety will undoubtedly be influenced by the outcome of the review. This is the first time that forestry workers have been asked their point of view around forestry safety, probably for 20, 20 30 years. Um, so that's good. We are very hopeful for that report, but it's just a report. What the next stage is going to be is to get the solutions implemented, and that is going to be a challenge. At Trident High, Chris continues training the next generation of forestry workers. Straight away, why did, how many wedges did I put in it? Hoping it will make a difference. Harper logging is one of the top crews in New Zealand. And um, it's the one that unfortunately Edemiha died in. Mm. And my brother took his position. I hope to go on that same crew and perform what I can do for them. They must stay at school now, they wag. Yeah. Always at school on time. Oh, they say it's a uh, it's a hard working job, but I say it's not for the faint hearted. For Selena and the families of the men who were not kept safe, the story will always be personal. The future eh, is pretty bleak because he ain't got no children. He was the only one for myself and his father. He was the first grandson of my parents. Yeah. Yeah. In his own in his own right. Yeah, he was special. When I go out into the community, I don't know what to expect. I don't know who's gonna come up and whack me on the back and say, hey, how are you? Or what's going on in forestry? Well, following his lawyer's advice, Edamiha's former employer could not be interviewed for this story. The dates for the CTU prosecutions are still pending and we'll be updating you as the push for change continues.